So legacy or revenant code, how to distinguish those two, uh, two terms. And both they are exist. And um, I don't think if anybody ever brought that together as the idea. So my name is Sergei Sergienka. I'm from Minsk. Uh, a few months back, uh, we with our team from Cybergizer were in Kiev. And I wanted to say very big thank you to Andre and Tatiana for hosting us in their office right after the post-election stuff that, that, that happened. So that was an awesome time that we spent together. We didn't, we didn't do any meetups or topics while we, be, while we were, were there, but now we're catching up. So thank you very much, guys, for, for your hospitality. That's, um, that's where, that was very important and still. Uh, I owe you the same when you, when you need that. Um, so in Minsk, a lot of good things happening used to happen and will be happening soon uh, with regards to uh, Ruby and community. Um, Brook, Belarus Ruby user group, which I'm part of, was rescheduled because of Corona uh, in March. And now we're scheduling it again because it should be like, it should, it should happen this exact day. So if anybody who were following to Belarus Ruby user group uh, on Facebook can potentially get the invitation and reminder that Brook happening today with the topic of engineering happening, uh, ha engineering happiness, but it's, it's not happening because of the, again, a lot of complex stuff that is, uh, that is going around, but the idea about that community, which I'm part of, and I was part 10 years at the moment, is that in this particular year, it's 10 years anniversary, an anniversary of Ruby community in Belarus. And we're proud that a lot of events we hosted together with Ruby meditation, with folks from, from Kiev and other cities from Ukraine and all, uh, all around the world. So we want to strike back and uh, we'll try to catch up this great year as a 10th anniversary. So maybe something good will happen in the uh, in next couple of months. <clears throat> with regards to, uh, to the timing, um, I think I have like 30 minutes and 20 slides. I will try to be like concrete and not slide uh, together. And the, all the slides I will share uh, right after the meeting. So there is, uh, you, can, you can get it after and, uh, and check it by yourself. So what was the initial motivation to some extent to, to think about this topic. That was um, a Twitter from uh, one gentleman from Global Ruby community saying that uh, something that he creates or something that we create, we'd like to be proud of not only in this particular time working within a particular product or in a particular time being manner, but something that can outlast us after we die, which is clear legacy, right? So which is something that we want to our kids to be proud of, proud of. And in this case, that was like funny question, but uh, when, you, when you're circling back to this topic saying, hey, is there any code from my previous project I can really show up? Is there anything I created that I can show to the, you know, to my friends that I can bring to you to the community and, uh, and show and say, hey, hey, see folks, this, this is the code I created like 10 years back. I did that once because I had a project, 10 year old project. That was my first project I, I used to work and it's still alive. So it's like running product in, in UK for, for like jurisdictions. I was the part of the team doing outsourcing for the client. And uh, sometimes back after al almost like nine years, the client tried to get back to the, to the company that I used to work in company didn't exist at, at that time. So the outsourcing company disappeared. And so he reached out to me directly saying, Hey, I remember you were working like 10 years back on this project. Can you help me with doing some stuff? Like really, come on. That, that was like very old, almost like, uh, 
and and here you can say like legacy application, but that was like very old Rails application. I don't remember the, the which version it was initially, but I picked it up a couple of years back with Rails three, starting like doing upgrades and so on and so forth. And I found my commits like almost a decade back, and I searched through it, and it was a lot of fun, but definitely not something that I can be like really proud of. And if you think about the same question, and I believe like most of you could ever, you know, ask yourself, like, is, is there something that I do can, um, can last longer? You can imagine this, this woman, right? So if you Google for Apollo 11 project, and I think like that's very popular uh, picture of uh, Margaret, which is software engineering, what, when you're gonna search for her, it's software engineer, which stands very proudly. And this is her legacy. This is the code she created that brought up a space shuttle. And uh, that's a very huge, uh, that's a very huge thing for, for, for humanity, for, for everybody. And when Tenderlove, when Patterson wrote his Twitter, I think he imagined something similar. Like all his code that he created, after some time, he can put up to the shelf and show it to his friends, kids, or whoever our relatives, and say like, "This is this was my work. This is like ten years of my life. This is what I created." But in fact, and this is literally what everybody thinks is a legacy or heritage. In in other words. But in fact, it's not that way. And um, if we try to be like a little bit specific, I, I think everybody knows about like legacy code and, and the problems. I want to, you know, do some spiral with uh, very common things digging into the deeper ideas. So legacy, this is something that outlasts you after uh, after you die. So you can consider it as a money. You can consider it as uh, something good that good, good get that happened. And in any case, that's the positive word for everybody. Legacy is good. If you get some legacy from your grandfather, father, you can be happy. But if you get a legacy code from your grandfather, I bet you're not gonna be happy because you have no idea how to write code in COBOL or whatever other you know, very old fashioned languages were there. And um, in computer world, not only in programming, that's the bad thing. Another bad thing that happened uh, with legacy was enterprise. That was another word that nobody liked, but nowadays I think this, this one has disappeared and legacy is there. Um, there is a lot of talks starting, uh, I think since 20 years back, if you want to find the history, how people hate or hated legacy code, you can Google and YouTube and you find hundreds of topics over different conferences saying legacy is bad, what we can do with it. Uh, to understand that, I think the, there is one interesting point that, again, uh, legacy that something that can exist as a very bright uh, object or very bright uh, achievement like music, architecture, uh, different kind of arts, or simply a country house that your uh, that your grandmother, after she passed away, gave to you. And um, nothing with code, nothing that is like really lives inside of the computer, nothing virtual, can rely on that point. And the reason for for that, like there is many reasons. And the one reason there, that we change everything so fast. And when we call legacy. Uh, this is something that's created by another person. That is something that we have no idea what was an intention. So when you read the book, you read it as uh, as the flow of uh, or experience from somebody else. But when you read the code, uh, you you don't get it as an experience. When you read legacy code, you are not getting new skills. When you read from the old ten years project. Uh, you cannot benefit from getting a new knowledge because you simply doesn't understand that and you don't want to do that. 
So if you put that into the like very top side, that everything is legacy. Like as soon as you commit, you call to the to the GitHub at the end of the day or at the end of the week, it becomes legacy. As soon as you create that, nobody ever would be happy to take a look and work with that. And uh, even though if there is something that you uh, really need to rely on, that's that's even worse, right? Another point here, why everybody hates legacy code, that's the, uh, somebody called that fundamental law of programming, that everybody likes code, like write code, but nobody likes to read the code. And uh, I can name you a few projects that happened like really recently that force you to read the code. Because when you, when you do a peer review, when you do code review, you read the code and provide your feedback. Like you're sharing your thoughts, uh, how to make it better. But this is happening like in the real time. So you, you pretend that you're participating in creation of the code. So you, you take that uh, pretty much okay. There is a lot of another practice that force you to read the code, which is kata. And uh, there is TDD kata. There is refactoring kata. And there is some uh, coding practice that uh, emphasizes importance of reading the code. And that's the very interesting idea because um, we usually read answers, but we don't read the pure code. So, so we don't read what is, uh, what was the idea uh, behind the scenes? Why a particular person solved this issue uh, right in the particular sentence of the code? And uh, if you want to get a solution, you Google for it, and you go to Stack Overflow, you do copy and paste. You usually don't thoroughly read the code, but you read what human explain about the code, which means that it's like a spell. It's like kind of a magic, right? So you want to do some, some magic, you control C, control V, and uh, two options, magic happen or not. And, um, and in this case, there is an importance of reading the code. And um, I was part of the project that is called Refactoring Stories. That's the, that's the uh, idea when you take the project that was in a pretty good conditions after refactoring. And you create historical slices that you can roll back uh, in the future, walk through and understand and then explain why a particular change was made why people created the initial version is this in this case and then walk through and refactor that on the uh, opposite on the opposite way for uh, for uh, for the for, uh, for the project it's called refactoring story it's available uh, on the internet you can play with it it's pretty funny and um yeah, the only reason there is like a limited number of languages at the moment, but it's open source and everybody can contribute to that. So the, um, the first idea that came to my mind that when you create a code, uh, it's better to create it in the way that other people would be happy to read. The same way as you would do some posts on the LinkedIn. Another great point that um, maybe that's our nature to complain about everything, right? So, and, um, the creator of C++ had this quotation. So there are two kinds of software, the one that people complain and another one that nobody uses. So if you use something, everybody like, hey, there's gonna hate, right? So you, you can find, you cannot make everybody's happy. In this case, at least you can try to make yourself happy. And, um, and that's not true as well. So for example, if you create the code and uh, you deploy that to production, as, as it was my case, Nobody touched this code for a year or two years. And then you're forced to get this code back. When you open that, you're going to blame yourself that this code is badly written, that it's better to refactor it heavily, even though there is like a lot of hacker stuff. But I, I believe nobody is going to happen, is going to be happening working with uh, the same code that was created like five years. Uh, five years ago or something like that. And um, it's a decade, almost 
maybe even like almost two decades where people started to think about methodologies, different approaches, uh, how to bear with the legacy hold, how to make it efficient, how to not stress out uh, your team members with your code that you created like just a couple of sprints before. And uh, there is no answer. Nobody can answer what to do with it. So the simple answer here that legacy code always wins. If you try to like, if you try to do your best, if you try to do like the, the code in the absolutely ideal manner, uh, there is no guarantee that after some time when it gets the process of aging, this code will still be a good code that everybody uh, like. And you can ask yourself, is there any code I really like? Is there any code I can consider a good piece of code? And um, I, I believe the answer is, is gonna be very hard. You can say that it's a great library. You can say it's a great gem. Uh, you can say it's a great tool, like a lot of tools that we use every day. But even if it's like a super cool uh, tool, nobody cares about its implementation inside. And um, it seems like maybe the, the overall problem, problem is not that real. Maybe this is just the human nature that we can take the legacy code as the idea and uh, uh, don't try to minimize it, just try to make it a little bit better. And there is like a great book, which is called Working Efficiently, uh, Effectively with Legacy Code. And um, if you want to harden in your refactoring practices, if you want to uh, harden in your uh, best practices in terms of agile, in terms of maintenance, in, in terms of constant upgrading your system, that's a gr great uh, high level set of advices that you can do, it does everything that you need, but answering the one question, but how to create a good legacy code. So if we think that there is no chance to not have, not having a legacy code at all. So in any case, there is a legacy. There is a code that, that is uh, struggling with, with its aging, how to make it good. Maybe it's not to be as we want it to be like iconic, super uh, super cool and and the proud heritage of a particular engineer but how to make it good so other people are people are happy to work with that and um, and in this case we need to turn it all upside down how to measure is this code good or not because of its value right so if the code solves the problem it has its value if it lasts longer in the code base and nobody touches it it means that it's a good code. At the same time, if the software is working properly, it means that the code with its value addresses the problem that whoever, the creator, brought to the idea for, for this piece of software, like business or uh, product owners or whoever. And in this case, it's a very similar to the idea that if you can win a war without shutting uh, bullets that's that's the best war uh, that's the best war that you can do if you can solve the problem without writing the code then it's a great program that you can create and in this case if we can consider in the code base in any code base what is the most old and not change the code then maybe we can find which part of the application has more value for example, if you open your super duper legacy ap application and then you find a piece of code or a method that never changed for 10 years, you have option. Is this the best code that was created in this application ever? And nobody refactored that because it's so important and so cool and so good, or it's completely useless. It's like garbage that uh, for some reason happened here and nobody really cares. So there is the reason to, you know, just drop it out, just throw it away into the trash bin. And that's another point. And, and more interesting concept 
in comparison the legacy or good code, what if we consider the code that's surviving and bring the idea of survival of if you implement in your project iteratively, if you do refactoring, if we can imagine the good project, what is the most unchanged code uh, for the life uh, time of uh, existence, for the lifetime for, for the application. And here comes the, the very interesting idea from the real world, not from the virtual world, which is bridges. Um, I, I, I don't know if anybody who is on the call now are fan, kind of a fan of the bridges, but there is people like bridges, collect different photos of bridges, uh, uh, Euros has different kind of bridges on uh, on its uh, on its face, and uh, if you hear, heard the story that that all all those bridges were faked, and one city in uh, I think in uh, Netherlands recreated all those bridges just to hype with this uh, fine print. So the bridges are old; they're monolith in in some extent of the of the software, and they were so inefficient; they were very costly. To create a bridge, what was equal to create a starship now? So if you can imagine, like, you know, uh, hundreds of years back, you wanted to connect uh, two sides of the river, you need to invest money, almost the same, not the money, but the effort, almost the same as you would launch satellite or launch, uh, you know, mission to the moon. And we now know that those bridges are not efficient and uh, and even though they were created like hundreds of years ago Pavlo saying in the comments that they're still still standing and people can use them and if you compare now those bridges are heritage and other bridges are not yet they are just utilize the idea for you know human to connect and do logistic or do whatever. They are just tools. Bridges are tools, but not heritage. And um, if you can count on your fingers the number of those bridges that survive after so many years, you can respect and we can see and uh, we see oh, this bridge is beautiful. Even though the Golden Gate is also beautiful and, and can, keep, keep, can keep thousands of people on it, uh, it's completely different bridge and the completely different idea behind it. And here is the question, do we really need to care about those bridges, creating something that can last thousands of years? Or uh, we need to keep up like, we build simple bridge. If more people coming, we destroy this bridge, build a new bridge, more people or trucks coming, we build another bridge. We, we still use different, like we change, what we are creating to reflect the the actual environment, and um, and here comes the another question. So uh, we are not just creating something that can uh, stay up for a particular time, as I said for for the code. We are creating something that can last until the project is relevant. And in most of the cases, software uh, lives up to five years. That's the usual lifetime for the software. Uh, if if they are lucky, uh, after five years, almost all the code base recreated completely. So within the five years frame, you can measure that your commit that you created cannot last there. And in this case, two questions. So how to create a system that can last longer, five years, 10 years, 20 years. And uh, how create something that outlasts us at all? And in this case, we cannot say about the code, but we can say about the whole system. And here comes the interesting idea, and that was was second part for uh, for me to to think about this uh, legacy code. It's to make an analogy, not on the macro level of the the code in itself and the system, but on the uh, not on the micro micro, but on the macro probably in English, that's the same way, but on the macro level, like, like a bi biological system. Like we as a human body, like a human being, having this human body and operating that, is this a code 
or or the whole system can we find analogy between what we create for example in the like web api or in a particular system to the uh to the human body and it comes that it's um, it's a very close so there is a few interesting points that that's happening uh there is a lot of things like philosophic things that the first step of a baby born is the first step to the death and we are dying right now a lot of cells are recreating the, themselves in the in the body and what is the self is it like a building brick and what is the self in the software it's a, it's a method is a, w w w how we can find it there and what is the system at all and um, and there's so many tiny components right so we can think about different organs like brain like liver lungs and so on and we can think about like blood cells about everything that goes through the through the uh, through this system and uh, and if we think about the body which is complex and all interconnected it has its own protocols it has neural system it has uh the, the 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 chemical stuff again i don't know how to say it in english because i'm not a biologist but uh, I think everybody understands how things in the body interconnect. They use electricity and they use like chemicals too. To if you hit the the fire, then you take it back because that's the very super fast electrical signals come neural neurons, uh, neurons. Or uh, if you're aging and you need to change your uh, hair color, that's the that's the another. Uh, transport protocol inside of the body. So the human body is very close to the complex system. And if we talk about legacy code, like monolithic code, can we consider human body to be an analogy? And um, to answer this question, we need to consider two things that are happening. So homeostasis, that's the process that they keep uh, body in balance, that your blood pressure, the sugar level, whatever, you, you need to keep on the normal, which is very close to monitoring into the production system. When you host anything, you need to keep CPU load, you, you need to keep all the bottlenecks, you need to keep storage, whatever. So homeostasis, that's the, that's the process that monitors and sends you feedback. This is what we definitely do. DevOps particularly do that and responsible for that. But when we create system now, we need to consider having this analogy for homeostasis inside there. And another point is uh, autophagy, autophagia. That's the way that cells or something inside of, the, of our body are recreating us, which means that uh, our body creates new cells and killing old cells constantly. Um, I don't recall, remember, I don't recall exactly, but uh, I think in like in 10 or something years, our skeleton is renovated completely which means that 10 years back, we are not the same person as we are now. And uh, taking into account this concept, we can go to the idea of legacy, this recreation me mechanism inside of us. And I think the great example is the old ships. And you can find some of them, like the uh, constitution, I think this one, that was created uh, 300 years back, but it's still, uh, and you can see like it's still working in the, like six years back photo presented here. But is this the same ship that was 100 years back or not? Because uh, all materials were changed. Everything in this ship uh, was rebuilt. It just keep its shape, but in fact, that's the brand new ship. But we call it legacy, right? So we call that legacy for worship in the US. And that's exactly the same concept that I wanted to put together to, um, to try to glue the idea for monitoring and doing like all this level of virtualization and feedback loops that we have uh, in uh, nowadays system and with analogy of homeostasis and autophagy, phagy, which means that we need to constantly kill parts of us in order to keep it healthy, which is clear refactoring. So if we put that all together and take this idea of value 
Then the revenant code comes, which means that this is the code that survived. And the goal for creation of the good legacy system is to create parts of the code that can accumulate more value and last longer. Uh, the revenant code is this case, or Bujovshi in, in Russian, or survived in English as the, I think as another word to, to say. Uh, it's the, the concentration of business logic isolated from other parts of application with its internal mechanism to keep it in shape and constantly renovate. And then when you can make it very solid, then this code is gonna last even though you're gonna refactor that faster, you're gonna refactor that pretty often. So the idea of revenant code is first to measure it and to understand how it is connected to the parts of monitoring, measurement and KPIs and all the processes for keep the, the quality of your product, uh, product uh, in good shape and refactoring. And to me, it comply to the idea, not just to refactor because we need to refactor but refactor in terms to really isolate logic and the value that was initially created to the code to the very simple and very, very clear stage and, and um, to emphasize its idea. So when you create the Greenfield project, there is like three simple rules for the, the creating this revenant or survived code. You need to recycle the code from the very beginning. You need to create mechanism that, uh, Instead of saying let's, uh, because th this is what's happening when you when you start working on a new project that that uh, legacy project let's let's say that way uh, the the first idea let's recreate everything I don't want to have idea about what's what's inside let's create from scratch yeah it's going to be better and uh, everybody hates this idea uh, specifically like if if you get to the, the particular stage of maturity, you say, no, you, you need to deal with legacy you, because something that you're gonna create is gonna be the same. There's no point to change something that is working good. So if you recycle the code and you make it constantly, and uh, instead of throwing away the whole project, let's throw away this module. Let's throw away this unclear part of the code which we don't understand. And the structure of the code and the structure of the project is created in a way that is easy to, to kill. It's easy to uh, you know, throw away, in other words. Microservices are close to that, but that's not about, that's not about architecture. That's, that's about the uh, part of the structure and the approach. And it explains it in the way that, why don't we create like, simple uh, parts. And I, 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 uh, if you're uh, not familiar with the idea one page pro program, then I, I encourage you to, to take a look. So keep the code in the way that other engineers or anybody who's gonna work on that can uh, briefly walk through and understand. And that's the, that's the, uh, that's the main part for, uh, for the creation. And immutability in the, uh, in the software that is running, which is like holy grail for DevOps. So don't touch it if it's working, you need to put it upside down. So if, if you need to upgrade something, just kill the previous one. If it's hard for you to get it back or roll back, your system is working uh, incorrectly. It's, uh, it's a bottleneck. So instead of upgrading, you're creating a new one. Instead of upgrading nodes, instead of upgrading your services, you recreating that, which brings you again flexibility on on the code that is uh, that is your legacy. I, I'm I'm running out of time, but that's the uh, the, the last slide almost. Sorry. <laughs> and for the existing project, um, there is a number of not 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 that many tools that that uh, as is uh, maybe worth, but there is some tools that can help you to do refactoring as part of your um, ideology and helps you to, uh, to make the structure. So uh, in fact, the, the one that is mentioned here, it, it helps you to isolate, like to, to do in surgeries. So you isolate a piece of code from the monolith and um, you make sure that is, uh, that is stable. 
and you replace that with the new structure and then delete it. What is missing here, and um, in terms of measuring value for this part of refactoring, you need to start tracking generation of refactoring. So not just doing refactoring as part of our routine, which means that not just ask your product owner to allocate 10% of each task to do refactoring, or as it's, uh, as it's done now uh, for some teams, for example, where I used to work, that was the rule that you need to keep code in the condition that is better than you took it from the other, right? So you, you put like on the constant way for doing refactoring and refactoring and refactoring thing, but there is no feedback. There is no feedback in terms of you compare is the value of the code changes. So when you start tracking in this way, when you isolate part of the code, you refactor it, you change it behavior, you do that often, and then you track how many times this particular part of the application was changed. Is this the first, second, 100 generation of a particular method? You can measure its value and you can elaborate it further in terms of keep this particular code as the revenant because it's crucial for the business and there is no way to modify it in the, in the matter that uh, application works or to throw it away and replace it with better tools, better version, better frameworks or whatever, uh, whatever you have. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, 